everybody. I hope you're all having a fabulous day. The title of this video is Twin Flames, Expressions of Love on the Precipice of Union. Uh, you may be seeing things anew at this time. You may even be seeing that your twin flame is matching your lovely stand life vision like never before in all the places where you weren't sure uh, if they really did match up in this area, if you didn't really know these things about them, they, um, you may be becoming aware that they are in fact matching up with you in every way and when, and of course they are. They're your perfect match. If they're not in union with you yet, uh, they will be having an experience of contrast, I promise you that, especially if they're not aligning with the people around you. One of the patterns that's uprooting in the collective right now is one of self-betrayal. Make sure that come up very strongly over the weekend, but fortunately it wasn't my problem. What, what do you need to do though to not betray yourself? You just love yourself. Follow your heart unwaveringly. Give yourself its full permission to do that. Nothing can harm you. Stay present with yourself. Bring your power back in. Recognize that love can't leave you. It's only an illusion that you ever betrayed yourself. No one can wrong you. There's only one divine truth. The illusion doesn't exist. There's something in um, A Course in Miracles that said forgiveness comes when you realize that what the other person did to you has in fact never occurred. Many, many relationships are built on a delusion and don't really exist. I mean, knowing what you know, as opposed to other people, you can look around and see through so many other fake relationships, but you don't need to know the truth of anybody else's relationship, you just need to know yours. I want to talk about intensity. Sometimes the upheaval can be absolutely brutal. It can, it can get you by surprise. But don't feel like you have to have a hard time to progress through that obstacle. If you feel you're at the precipice of union, I feel into what's stopping the rest of it com coming in. Do you feel vulnerable about expressing your love? A feeling of being unable to express which flows into how do I love more deeply and how do I go deeper into my purpose? It requires trust and not attaching to the stuff that's leaving, the misaligned stuff that's leaving, or the stuff that you don't want that's leaving. If you're experiencing that, just saying, hey, there's a lot of stuff funneling through and out. Yeah, hurrah, it's going. Just sit in your peace. If something is yours, you don't have to make a big stand about it being yours. Unions are deepening. Recognize that everything's being orchestrated perfectly. And if you're going to see your twin flame soon, you don't necessarily have to do that expression of love right in the face. You don't have to dump all your love on them. Just be present there. And that's just, that's all that's needed. And there are infinite ways to connect with your twin flame. You don't have to say, Oh, I haven't seen you since the plague. What have you been doing? I missed you. It's not necessarily about throwing all the love at them all at once. Your beingness is the love. You're already connected within. You're already communicating within. So it's really a case of just being physically present with them and seeing how that feels and working through the feelings that come up. We can't just put my twin flame in a sack and carry them away. Unfortunately, come back to yourself within. Any apparent obstacle is a blink of an eye in terms of your union and your lifetimes and your eternity together. There are sometimes karmic attachments, people who may have been known from before, and there's a pattern playing out, a trauma bond. I know of more and more couples coming into union every week. So let's have a look at what enabled it, that. that. Those, you, those particular unions to come in. So, yeah. A sip of my very strong tea. 
Oh, that's still a little bit warm. Right, so what um these recent unions that I know about looking at what enabled them. Well, all those unions, first of all, had their own unique plan, a different plan. Some people were coming into union quickly and then building the union foundation. From there, some will come into union and maybe separate again and possibly go back in deeper. Who knows? It's their journey. It's where they're at. Some of us want the foundation to be completely solid before union happens because we're done with these horrendous cycles of separation. We don't want to experience it coming in and then leaving again because it sucks. So looking at it this way, if, if your twin flame does have a karmic pattern playing out, or if you have, yeah, if if there is a karmic pattern playing out in your lives, it's playing out over there, and the pattern is somehow rooted in the belief that we, uh, in the belief, the, the misaligned belief that we we can't have this love, and that's a lie that leads to settling. Really, that's the place to go. Look at why and where in your life you are settling. It might be a really minor little things. A really minor little thing. I uh, <clears throat> replaced this week <clears throat> a couple of pairs of surf shorts because the one pair that I had, I really liked the pattern but didn't have enough pockets. And the other pair, I liked the colour and everything, but yeah, but they needed to be ironed perfectly and what do you do with clothes that need ironing? You get rid of them. And also they um, were a little bit tight as well. I've got some bigger baggier ones coming. Yeah, it's just really tiny little things like that. Make sure that everything is perfect. That's, so that's a really easy way that you can make adjustments in your reality. What can you no longer tolerate? Yeah, my tolerance for a few things has been going down just lately. We put up with the life that we're in and we don't always realise we're tolerating something. Just like the counterparts might not realise that they're settling. They may be, but they may just believe that that's all that they can have. So they believe they have to tolerate. Just like we believe we have to tolerate something. No, no more tolerating shorts that are a little bit tight and don't have enough pockets. <laughs> The twofold option of love and not love, God versus ego, the continued playing out of not being, a, can't have the real deal pattern. It's a process about looking at that and the love part, the God part. God not staying present is really us continually abandoning, abandoning ourselves and God and feeling, and feeling abandoned by God. In order to have something, I have to give up something. Or in order to have a little bit of happiness, one must endure many months of misery. No, that's bullshit. Even if it has looked like um, it was the only thing that was available. You're having something else, other than what your true heart's desire is, is, is never going to be satisfying. It's never going to be the real thing. That's the crux. The, the crux and the cracks to heal the pattern. Abandoning source is also self-abandonment. You only ever betray yourself if you thought you couldn't have the real deal. It's just a lack of belief. This happens because we believe we can't have love and then one makes a choice to build a life without it. Not, not because they particularly want to. No one's over the moon about it. It's just... Um, comes from a state of resignation. If you look at the intensity of some of the healing that the collective has currently been going through on the collective journey, look back at the start of your journey, say how much more you can handle, but not back then. These days we're um, far less tolerant to letting upsets sit because we're intolerant to settling for less. When we realise that something feels bad, we no longer go through the day without addressing it. We're literally having to down tools to do it there and there. 
But every little upsetting thought, stop, do the mirror exercise. In the moment, don't let any upset slip. Make that new choice of love and make the new choice to remember your oneness with your, with your twin flame and the divine thousands of times a day. Yeah, if you go to bed and a load of stuff comes up to work through because there's no distractions and that will happen, it's okay. Just know that sometimes you might not be able to sleep or work properly until it's worked through. The collective is becoming more intolerant to not being loved. And as we do that, we're going to feel, it's going to feel more intense because we're becoming more aware of what's sitting there in the core. When you see your twin flame... They're going to do the whole classic twin flame thing. Bless them. They'll reflect a little bit of this and a little bit of that. <laughs> and so it's good if you keep yourself free of expectations as to how they'll be in that moment. And recognise that whatever they show you is okay. It's not the end result. The mirroring the mirroring's supposed to show you stuff that you don't like so then you can mirror it. It's okay. It's just what you need in the moment. As you step forward, you are going to step into at least some poo, and it may well be smelly. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be smelly. Well, don't focus on the poo. Focus on the fact that this is the way, and everything's getting cleaned up. All the poo's getting cleaned up. Yeah, the settling pattern, the core pattern, the root pattern, which is connected to believing a, a belief in being unworthy of love or being unlovable and all that bollocks the block is not the reality isn't it a joy being able to love yourself your union and your twin flame out of that feeling unlovable block what a beautiful gift you have there if the shared upset of believing in one's inherent unlovability has manifested in a third party or hairbrush being present, like a hairbrush is what my community uses to describe a karmic partner because it's just a nonsense word. Don't be afraid to go to the place where it hurts if this is your situation. Don't accept it or give power to it. Only in your mind do you need to change. Nowhere else. You don't go out and try and remove things from your external reality. You and your twin flame share the same consciousness. Once you make a new core choice, it means they align with it. It's okay if it doesn't show on the outside immediately. You know that new choice, a new core choice has been made in the same moment. What do you think will happen when you no longer see a hairbrush in your mind? Don't get... <laughs> they will vibe out of your reality once you stop giving them power. This is the aim. This is a key piece of information. The hairbrush signifies the settling for less pattern, not believing that one is capable of having real love. So when we remove the pattern, we're just left with the divine, ourselves, and our twin flame. They're the only things that never, ever come to pass in the whole of eternity, because it's only you and God, and your twin flame is you. So it's God, yourself, and your twin flame. Always. Everyone else comes in and out, including any old silly illusory hairbrush yeah the belief of i can't have god i can't have love i'm going to put something else in its place as a substitute that's all a hairbrush is a pseudo sorry private joke there <sighs> trying to make a, a person or connection is a source of love it's not created to be that. It will never be satisfactory. The root is believing we can have the divine. We can have God. We can have love itself. Knowing that we are lovable. It's all interconnected. Some people are settling for having no one. Living in the void. It's uncomfortable. It's, it's even worse being the wrong person. It's still a void. It's trying to avoid the void. Being aware of it, but shutting down. It looks like they got the thing, but they so haven't. I mean, I'm sure we've all tried this. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you this. 
You're just filling the space. It's like us saying, oh, I have a partner. Uh, I have a frying pan. Would be fucking do. <laughs> Excuse me. So yeah, anyone can latch on to some random person. He's, he's never going to make it real. That's why we have to show up in this place with a dumper trap full of love. That's really the place to focus the void of feeling unlovable and not good enough and not being able to have it. Right now we have access to that space. Even if we can only chip away at it piece by piece in consciousness, choose to target these places really effectively and efficiently and see what shifts. If the upheaval is strong, it means you're in the right place. You can choose for it to be peaceful. Excuse me. It's very satisfying to move through all this stuff. Hurrah! Okay, everybody, I'm going to end this message here. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or, if, or any requests about any specific topic that you would like me to talk about, please let me know in the comments. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.